love. We should not be living to survive. We should be living to bless something so great. You know, people say, oh, I'm going to serve. I'm serve. You know, and they, there's so many people who are just like a flash. They're in one day and that's it. It means the harvest is great. The labors are few. What does that mean? You can look at it negatively, like look at those labors, but you can look at it positively, and that is that there's labors are few. The harvest is great. What does that mean? There's no shortage of opportunity in the Lord. There's no shortage of opportunity because the harvest is great, but the labors are, are few. There's always more harvest than there is labors. People say, oh, I'm just waiting for ministry. You know, I'm waiting. Well, you know, however, in the Lord's time, what he has for you, but we are to be ministering now in one way or another. You're to be ministering now in one way or another. People say, oh, there's no opportunity for me to minister. Well, then you're calling God a liar because he said the harvest is great. You know, it may not be what you, what you demand. It may not be this position or it may not be that, but the point is you are always to be, there's no shortage of what God would have for you. There's no shortage, whether you're on this committee, you're on this, that's not what it's about. The harvest is great. They didn't let me teach my doctrine. My, that doesn't, that's not it. That's not the harvest. He said, the harvest is great. The labors are few. You really want to serve God? There's no shortage all around you. Amen. There's a world around you. Amen. We have to see it. Amen. You know, we tend to live in a spirit of shortages. It's not never enough, never enough. There's time, never enough time, never enough this, never enough that, never enough... But the Lord turns it around. He looks at a situation of need where everybody's saying there's a shortage. And he says, this is, there's no shortage. There's no shortage of need. And that's good. That means it's plentiful. You understand? You know, we would look at that and say, oh, look, look, this person's sick. This person's hungry. This person this. Oh, no. And he's saying, this is plentiful. It's great because my power is greater. Therefore, it's actually abundant. Everything, you know, there's no shortage of opportunity. There's no shortage of unsaved people. That's good. That's an opportunity for salvation. There's no shortage of problems. Praise the Lord. That means there's no shortage of God's answers. That means His answers are even greater. There's no shortage of your weakness. Therefore, praise the Lord, there's no shortage of God's strength, which will come in you. You know, every rejection that you know, and every time someone rejects you, praise God, because it is, it is the opportunity for the love of God to really be received by you. You know, every time there's an ending of something, God's got a new beginning. You look around your life, you see shortages. Are you living with an attitude of shortage? No. If there are plenty of shortages, there's plenty. That's an attitude of plenty in God. A spirit of plenty. The harvest is plentiful, so beg the Lord. Beseech Him. Send your workers. How many things do we beg God over? You know, how many things do you beg Him for? Lord, you know, how many? You know, Lord, I want to be married. I beg you. You know, that's usually what it is. Or, you know, give me more, you know. But to beg for others, be other people, oh Lord, do it. Do something great, Lord. Do it. There are a lot of imperfect people in the Great Commission, but as much as they're doing it for the Lord, for His Great Commission, there's a, there's a, there's a quality of greatness that comes into their life. Their lives are for God, for His love. Harvest is great. There's always more. There's always more to be reaped. There's always more blessings to be reaped, too. That's what the harvest is as well. He says, lift up your eyes. Don't you see around you? There's opportunity that's waiting for you. There are, the, the picture of the harvest is blessings waiting. Blessings waiting. They, no Hebrew went into the harvest and said, oh, we've got to go on the harvest today. It was, praise God, now we're going to reap. Now we're going to reap. It's waiting for us. Let's just cut it down. Look what we got. Look at the wheat. Look at the olives. Look at the fruit. And God is saying, there are blessings I have for you. It's all around you. It has to be reaped now. It's all around you. But you've got to go out. You've got, you got to go for it. You've got to do my will. And you will reap the blessings. They're waiting for you. What do you say? In Ephesians it says, there, God has good works that are prepared already. What you're going to do, or what he wants you to do, they're already there. Now, how can they already be there? It says there are good works, good things that he's prepared for you to just walk into. They're just waiting. But you've got to walk into it. Open your eyes. Someone crying, you're to be God's hand. All of life is a harvest field. God has sent you. He, you we need every one of you. I don't care if you have a degree, you have, you have a ministry license, you are to be God's emissary. You are to be God's ambassador. You're to be God's angel to that situation, to your world, to your life, to the people around you. Using your gifts, and to go, by what authority? 
by the authority of the Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest owns the harvest. Who, you know, whose is it? You know, you're not just struggling on your own. It's his harvest field. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers into his field. He owns everything. He owns. You have the authority to go to this world. You have the authority to go where you would not go because you're working for the one who owns it all. Remember I shared once about the private and the general. I said, when does a private have the same power as a general? When the private is walking in the authority of the general. Walking in the will, carrying a special paper of the general. Whatever it is, when the private... So what's the principle? We're privates in this universe. God is the general. When do you have the authority of God? When you walk in His will. When you walk in the will of God, you have the power of God. You have the authority of God. When you don't walk in the will of God, you don't have authority. I mean, you don't have any real authority. But when you walk in the will of God, the power, the authority comes. It's kind of like surfing. You know, surfers don't move themselves. They just wait for the wave and they ride it. They go along with it. That's what it is with God. You, this is His will. It's a wave. This is His will. I want to go with it. I want to, this, lo, this wave of, of love, I want to go with it. This wave of the Great Commission, I want to go with it. This wave... I want to go with it. So the Great Commission, of all, in all different ways, I don't mean just going overseas, I mean here in your life, as well as that, is if anything is God's will, that's His will. Because He said, that's my will, I'm committing it to you. So there's power waiting in that. That's where His will is. And so people say, you know, should I, you know, you know, should I go, should I not? Listen, pray if you should not go, because God already said go. Sharing God's love, shining His love, being a blessing on earth. That has the power of God behind it.